Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie the Dawn. I remain your host, Chad of Fury333, and it looks like everything is all cleared up. Sorry about that last game, or for YouTube players. Sorry you didn't get to see the last game, it was a bunch of still frames because I changed a thing in OBS that overtaxed the computer. I didn't realize it would. My test showed no problems, but I guess something happens with Zero K that doesn't happen with anything else. But So, yeah, my testing was clearly inadequate. Regardless, we are here, and it seems to be working fine, so... Let's get to the game. 400 is going for the gunship plant, while Catastrophe going for Klugibot Factory. And this is a relatively normal matchup on this map, because this map tends to encourage the use of gunships, as there is a very short aerial rush distance compared to ground rush distance. On the other hand, Cloakie is just popular. It's actually pretty good, but it is also popular. It's a very common starting pick. It's my common starting pick whenever I play, so it's, it's definitely good. If you like being able to move around and rapidly hit things around the map, unlike, say, Shieldbot, where it's more focused around having this big ball. But yeah, Gunship, on the other hand, of course, they are good for very early raids on a map like this, where the rush distance is as tiny as these blast wings will show, as they're going to hit every single one of these metal extractors and destroy all of them, leaving Catastrophe with no money. Or, in this case, they're going to hit the factory in the last case, so that'll leave Catastrophe unable to build things, which is still really valuable. That's more valuable, in fact, at this point. So yeah, Catastrophe is unable to rebuild anything, unable to get builders up to actually deal with this. And of course, we could see more ba more Blastwings coming in any minute now, but we aren't. 400 is not going for Blastwings, they are just going to be building up their economy and building up some defenses, because that is the prudent thing to do. At this point, though, Catastrophe does still have a fair amount of money. They can rebuild decently enough, and at least they had an army to begin with. The problem, however, is that despite the fact that defenders are currently quite a bit more expensive than they used to be, 400 still able to build quite a few of them, as blast wings are cheap and tiny, and they didn't build very many. At any rate, 400 is going to be fine keeping themselves alive, but I think we're going to see Catastrophe start to expand pretty quick. They have Gremlins up, they're likely to get the Conjurers up pretty quickly. Once that's done, Catastrophe is just going to expand. Like, if the Gremlins are up in their main base, stopping anything from coming in, and, the, and if the Gremlins don't, the Defender might. I mean... I obviously don't want to talk about the game that didn't get pos properly recorded, but it did show that defenders can miss blast wings. Like, blast wings can literally just dodge under the missile even though it homes. It was a bit weird. That was the one thing I'm kind of sad that the game was not recorded for, was those weird bugs. But, that's fine. The replay still exists. At any rate, 400 does have blast wings again around the map in pretty opportune spots as well. Although in one of those cases, it's just going to expand to the southeast, just to be cheeky. Sheesh 400. Just rude. Catastrophe, on the other hand, can't really do much. I mean, they have a small vanguard of glaives just to figure out what's going on, but what are they going to do? I mean, the gunships don't have to go north in order to leave the base. So unless 400 goes for a ground switch, these glaives are going to see nothing. Admittedly, though, that also might be a tip-off to Catastrophe that there is no ground switch. Still valuable information, but nowhere near as definite. Now, Catastrophe does have the Conjurer up, so they got something. However, they also have a Blast Wing. Not them, but they have to deal with one. And actually, that's fine. That Blast Wing didn't do much. It got some scouting in, but the worker is not dead. Nowhere near dead, really. And it can go back and rebuild this sooner rather than later. This is actually not going too badly for Catastrophe, all things considered. The only problem for them is a lack of energy. But otherwise, they're doing all right. I mean, the Rapier's going to be a bit of a pain, but only one Gremlin. Still getting a lot of value. Sheesh, that's third dead. Considering the relative cost difference... Actually, I guess it's not much value. You need like three or four to have tr proper value. If there were three, that would have been great. One's not enough. And Catastrophe losing a couple... Oh, seriously, Catastrophe, that... I mean, it's a bit tricky because against a standard... Well, Econ Commander. Against an Econ Commander, you can't... Standard's the name of the Commander for 400... Against an economy commander, four glaives properly positioned can win. And six glaives are guaranteed to win. Or just about guaranteed. As guaranteed as anything in this game. But there were only about two or three at any one time hitting the commander. So, of course, the commander's not going to die. And it's also level two now, so my previous numbers don't apply anymore. Okay, it looks like everything's working fine, according to the people who are watching the stream, because apparently they have frames now. I have saved the frames. 
I am glad to have done that. And no animals had to die in the process either. I feel like no one's gonna get that. Anyway, the rapier again still alive, still being a bit of a pain. Should the gremlin should be able to deal with that at this point? Four hundred. Why are you not switching over to factories yet? The catastrophe is gone, full on anti air. This is when you want a ground switch. I don't know why four hundred is stuck with the gunships because they're gonna die. Actually, this gremlin's gonna be doing a nice job. The problem is the gremlin is <gasps> no, it's hold fire. Nice, I like it. The gremlin's able to scout everything out, so. Catastrophe sees all. 400 is completely known. Or at least that part of them is completely known. The Southeast, not so much. I don't think Catastrophe even is remotely aware that there's anything to the Southeast. And no, they are not. They might have some radar coverage? No, no, they don't. Not that far. So yeah, unless they kept track of the radar coverage of things going Southeast, they have no idea that there's a base being built up down there. They will pretty soon, though. This wasp is going to give it away. But otherwise, no. However, 400 is still keeping their economy quite strong, thanks in large part to the Southeast base. That's... Well, okay, it's four metal so far, but it's still something. Actually, they've expanded quite a bit compared to Catastrophe. Catastrophe's hardly expanded at all, despite the fact that Catastrophe does have a strong anti-air setup. The early blast wings did force them to build more defenses and build more anti-air, not in as many constructors, not as much of a ground army. So they haven't been able to deal with what 400 has been building, and they haven't been able to really build up much themselves. The one thing I'm wanting to see... There it is! There's the heavy tank factory. I was about to say, one thing I want to see is punishment for overcommitment into anti-air, and that is exactly what we're seeing. Although, that being said, that wasp might die. Probably won't die. In fact, it's gonna live just fine. But it might have. It was close. Surprisingly, the Blastwing doesn't actually deal with anything here. It will in a second when the glaive comes too far forward, but hey, this this expansion is going to go down in the southeast. Like I said, it's kind of been revealed. The glaive is going to burn to death, sadly, for it. I mean, it lived a short life. Actually, it should be fine. Never mind. It's good. The glaive, the glaive survives because blastwing damage does not set things on fire. It just hurts them while they're inside the fire cloud. Now, the one thing for cat Catastrophe right now is they need... Clearly, they need energy, because they're losing a lot of energy on cloaking. It's not really clear from the display, but... Yeah, minus 0.5 energy per gremlin. So the grand total... They're draining a, draining about 2 energy on top of the the Conjurers, which are draining another... Well, 0.5 each, so... Not much. But still, there's an energy drain there that is not compensated for. And also overdrive's kind of being is kind of kicking in. So yeah, it just catastrophe needs more needs way more energy to work with this stuff. If they want to have their strategy work with all the cloaking going on, it's not much, but it matters. This point, Reapers. And I've gotta stop saying at this point. I keep saying that. That's a weird phrase. I don't know why I do that. Right now, that's a good phrase. I like that phrase. Right now is a much more colloquial phrase to express the same overall sentiment. So right now we have a Reaper and a Banisher. Reaper Banisher mix will be perfect. I mean there's not much that's dealing with it. There is a spider switch which I'm guessing is gonna go for cra no 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 tarantula. No why tarantula? Why would they go for tarantula? No crab is the only thing that comes to mind. Or maybe flea? Like for scouting purposes? I'm not really sure. Gotta say though this is nice. Catastrophe able to get rid of a few of 400's constructors. Four wasps right away. That's about 30 build power. Right there. Just gone. And each of them costs 300. That's 1,200 metal. That gives 30 build power each. Or 30 build power in total. Gone. For free. Or for the cost of one gremlin. That, that was actually potentially a turning point. The only downside here is that Catastrophe doesn't have a whole lot of economy to work from. So while they did just break... Most of 400's workers, if not all of them... No, not all of them. Or actually, hang on. Yeah, all of them. That's it. 400 has no workers other than their commander. They're actually in a really vulnerable spot right now. It's just the fact that their commander is so far out of the way and so well defended that it's not going to get killed. But everything else... Yeah, they have no builders right now. They just lost all of them. So Catastrophe could actually turn this around 
but it's gonna be a very tough fight, and they're gonna lose a bunch of glaives to this Stardust here, and that's gonna pretty much seal the deal. So, bit of a shame there, but that is going to be... That's gonna be how it goes. Now, what are we seeing? We are seeing infiltrators! Well, yeah, I guess that does make sense. That's a good idea. Because, like I said, the commander is the one vulnerable thing, and also tanks, being that they've been revealed, are gonna be vulnerable to infiltrators. They're heavy single targets. Infiltrators work perfectly against those. That's a great strategy. So Catastrophe's tactical thinking here is great. The one thing they have not going for them is their economy, but their overall strategy is sound. Gotta say, that's good thinking there. So with the Infiltrators up, that should be able to stop one or the other off... No, there's two of them, never mind. So should be able to stop both of them. The problem, of course, is energy. Again, they are cloaked, as is everything else, and I almost think that these should be decloaked just to avoid it, although I think Conjurers only use... Yeah, they only use point 0.1 per. Yeah, Catastrophe... They don't have enough energy. They desperately need more energy. That's the one thing that's killing them right now, is a lack of energy. And the Banisher, with that being down, the Glaive should be able to get a free kill. The Reaper won't be able to turn back in time, and actually isn't. Not sure why I went for the restart there, but okay, that's fine. And the anti-air is still up, so Catastrophe does have a pretty good shot at getting rid of everything that 400 has built up. Unfortunately, their AA is quite spread out. They have a dozen, but they have a dozen gremlins. That dozen gremlins is split into two halves, and one of them's over north, which probably should be. Although, maybe actually should be over here. Like, if these guys were over here, I'd be much more confident in their ability to do something. However, six gremlins against everything coming in here is still pretty effective. I mean, that's going to force a retreat. And that's good. That's value. Problem Harvest Catastrophe is still dealing with the Reaper. And unfortunately, the one infiltrator did not go after the Reaper, which had it done so, or just the infiltrators in general, they're stuck here. That's unfortunately not making use of the value that they have, which is immense. Like, seriously, this game is something that can be turned around right now because of that value. So I failed to understand why they aren't going for that. They must have just forgotten it. They must have... It's just probably an APM thing. But otherwise... Catastrophe has lost a fair bit. They do need to rebuild. The bigger thing, though, is they need to fire back. They're actually not in a bad spot to do that, either. They have the anti-air to scare away 400 from doing anything. They have enough ground forces on top of the infiltrators that really the tanks can't legitimately do much. Except for the APM fact that the infiltrators are not being used, which they really should be, but like I said, 400 is clearly not paying attention. If 400 were paying attention and actually pulled the infiltrators up to deal with everything here, like the infiltrators in combination with the gremlins, they'd have this game. Even with the economic disadvantage, 400 has been spending so much on units that have been getting torn to pieces that it can still work. Granted, 400 rather, Catastrophe, needs to be building their own economy in the process. Like, they need to be using the infiltrators to take out the tanks, gremlins to take out all the ground air forces, and they obviously have a ground follow-up to take out the tanks on top of the infiltrators, and build up their economy, all at the same time. It's still a massive uphill battle, but it looks doable. Especially with all these workers dying. Like, all these wasps dying means 400 can't really re-expand. And that's huge. That's the biggest thing that needs to happen. The problem, though, for 400 is they don't... Where is... Or Catastrophe, rather. Catastrophe doesn't have much radar. They have no real idea where 400 is. So they don't really have a way of taking out anything 400 has reliably or putting the gremlins in the best position. They only have half a dozen of them. And throwing in the towel, I think, prematurely, but... I guess they figured there wasn't much. Granted, they didn't have as much of a metal income. That is huge. But... I... I could see them winning that match. It would have been tough, it would have been a major uphill battle, and it would have involved quite a lot more APM than they were showing, but it would have been doable. The biggest challenge would have been dislodging the southeast, but he could have ignored that. Maybe gone for here, in the eastern side, or just go for the northwest. Take that apart, that's almost undefended. So we're picking that to shreds and getting rid of the tanks that are pretty expensive, really. Like, you look at the tanks right now, they're... Yeah, that's almost 3,000 metal. A couple of infiltrators on that would have been very valuable. See, the, yeah, 280 each, that would have been massively effective. But unfortunately, there wasn't much. I, guess, I could see that. 
So close. Actually, 400 dealt quite a bit of damage considering their massive disadvantage in units. So, I don't know. It's a bit of a weird setup, but that's how it went, I guess. I mean, Catastrophe didn't have much in the way of... No, sorry. Catastrophe dealt more damage. Never mind. Other way around. Catastrophe dealt loads of damage. Their unit value was no nowhere there, but they dealt loads more damage than 400. This is what I mean. They could have easily torn apart 400's forces. Like, the 1,000 damage difference wasn't as big. Actually, Catastrophe did have a metal disadvantage... Or rather, a unit destroyed disadvantage. Metal destroyed disadvantage. Their attrition wasn't great. It's just the Infiltrator could have turned that all around. A couple extra Infiltrators... Coming in, getting rid of the Banishers, getting rid of the Reapers, or at the very least providing enough of a threat that force could be projected in the back. Oh, and chat's pointing out that they probably weren't playing seriously in the first place. And I guess that's fair. But yeah, Catastrophe, they had that. I probably was saying 400 had that and was an uphill battle, and that was entirely wrong. So if I said that, sorry about that. Bit of a backwards thing to say. But yeah, Catastrophe was fine. Or potentially fun. They... Anyway, whatever. Next match is going to be between... What was it? Where is it? Oh, there's... It's going to be between Dying Friend and Anarchid on La Isla Bonita. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned. <laughs>